Hey everyone! Welcome to English Shadowing Practice video. Today, we're diving into the fun topic of planning a weekend trip. It's going to be a great discussion to help you practice your English and pick up some handy travel tips. So, let's jump right in! And don't forget to share your own travel experiences and tips in the comments below. Thank you, Jordan. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to sharing insights on travel planning and discussing our personal experiences. Let's delve into our conversation and provide some useful tips for our audience. To start things off, what's your ideal destination for a weekend getaway and what makes it special for you? I'm a huge fan of the mountains for a quick escape. The fresh air and stunning scenery are so rejuvenating. But I also love beach destinations, for their relaxing atmosphere and beautiful ocean views. Both offer a great break from the everyday grind. How about you? Do you have a favorite type of destination? I'm more of a city explorer. I love discovering new cities, trying out local food, and visiting museums. Each city has its own unique character and vibe. So, what kinds of activities do you enjoy when you get there? When I'm in the mountains, I'm all about hiking and exploring nature trails. It's a fantastic way to stay active and enjoy the outdoors. At the beach, I love swimming and lounging on the sand. I also enjoy trying out local seafood. And in a city, I'm into checking out landmarks and sampling different restaurants. I think a mix of activities makes the trip more enjoyable. Do you have any favorite activities you always plan for? I love that approach. I'm a big fan of walking tours and trying out local cafes. It's a great way to soak in the local atmosphere. Speaking of planning, what do you think are the must-have items for packing for a weekend trip? For a weekend getaway, I always pack comfortable clothes and shoes, especially if I'm planning on a lot of walking or hiking. I also bring a small first aid kit, some snacks, and a reusable water bottle. If I'm heading to the beach, sunscreen and a good book for downtime are essentials. A compact camera is also great for capturing memories. Packing can be quite the challenge sometimes. What's the hardest part for you, and do you have any packing tips? Packing can definitely be tricky. The hardest part for me is making sure I don't overpack. One tip that helps is rolling clothes instead of folding them. It saves a lot of space. I also use packing cubes to stay organized and always keep a checklist to ensure I don't forget anything important. I once packed in such a rush that I forgot all my toiletries. I had to scramble to find a store as soon as I arrived and ended up buying way more than I needed. It turned into a funny story, though, and now I double-check my packing list. Those are some great tips. Sometimes those little mishaps become the most memorable stories. Have you had any interesting cultural experiences during your trips? Absolutely! On one trip to a small town in Spain, I joined a local festival with traditional music and dancing. It was amazing to immerse myself in the local culture and interact with the residents. Another time, I visited a market in Thailand and tried some street food that was both delicious and unique. It's these cultural experiences that really enrich travel. That sounds incredible. I had a similar experience at a traditional tea ceremony in Japan. Learning about the cultural significance behind it was fascinating. Also, do you have any local recommendations for must-visit spots in the places you've mentioned? Definitely. If you're heading to the mountains, Glacier National Park offers breathtaking views and excellent hiking trails. For beach lovers, the Amalfi Coast in Italy has gorgeous beaches and charming towns to explore. 
If you're looking for city trips, Kyoto in Japan is known for its beautiful temples and gardens, and Barcelona in Spain boasts amazing architecture and vibrant street life. Each place has its own special attractions. Those recommendations sound amazing. Now, let's touch on traveling with friends versus family. How do you find the experience differs between the two? Traveling with friends tends to be more spontaneous and flexible. You can easily change plans and try new things on a whim. For instance, if we spot a cool new restaurant, we'll just go for it. With family, trips are usually more planned out, because everyone's preferences need to be considered. It can be a bit more structured, but you end up creating some really special memories, like family game nights, or exploring new places together. That's a great perspective. Each has its unique benefits. Lastly, have you ever had any funny or unexpected experiences on a trip? Oh, definitely. There was this one time during a road trip when we decided to detour to see a quirky roadside attraction. The world's largest rubber band ball. We were so excited that we missed our exit and ended up in a completely different town. We spent the day exploring this unexpected place, enjoying some amazing local food and discovering a charming little bookstore. It turned into one of those delightful, serendipitous moments that made the trip unforgettable. That's a fantastic story. It's those spontaneous moments that often make trips memorable. It's been great hearing your tips and experiences about planning a weekend trip, packing, and traveling with friends versus family. I'm sure our viewers have picked up some valuable insights for their next adventure. Thanks for tuning in to today's English shadowing practice. We hope you enjoyed our chat about planning a weekend trip and found it useful for your English practice. If you have any questions, or want to share your own travel experiences and packing tips, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more engaging English practice content. See you in the next video.